In part two, we're going to look at how we're going to use the information from analyzing transactions to prepare our financial statements. Remember, our financial statements are already pre always prepared at the end of the period. So in this case, we're going to be looking at the end of our month. So therefore, we're going to be using the very ending balances that we see for each one of these accounts. We're not going to look at the beginning balances. We're going to look at the end. Remember, just as always, we have to prepare our financial statements in a particular order. And we're going to do that same thing here. So income statement always comes first because we know we need that net income or net loss in order to prepare our statement of our owner's equity. So again, they always give you some additional instructions at top. Please make sure you read through those. In our heading, we have to have a label, which is going to be the date that we're looking at. Remember, your income statement is always for a time period. This business was established on July, 30, on July 1st, which means that we're only looking at the information for our revenues and our expenses for that one month. So for the month ended July 31st. We then need an account. Remember, all of our account names are listed right here at the top of that grid. We start with our revenue account. Remember, our revenue account in this situation was our sales commission. And at the end of the period, our sales commission was at $20,600. We now need a label, and our label is going to be our expenses. That is what we're going to list next. We're going to list out all of our expenses. So our expenses are listed in order of greatest to least with miscellaneous expense coming last. So our rent expense is our most expensive expense. So we're gonna list that one first at 3,200. We then have our salaries expense at, oh, at 2,600. Next we had that automobile expense And our automobile expense is at $14.50 at the end of the period. We then have our supplies expense, representing the supplies that were used during the period at $8.50. And then finally, our miscellaneous expense was at $700. So we go to our labels and amount descriptions. What we need to do is we need to come up with our total expenses. We need to compare our total expenses to our total revenues. So during the period, we had total expenses of $8,800. So we compare what we've earned to what we've used. And in this case, we have earned more than we use. So we have a net income. Revenues minus expenses gets us our net income or net loss, and we have $11,800 in our net income. We need that last number, the net income, in order to complete our statement of owner's equity. So again, we still need a heading like our income statement. Our heading is going to be for the period of time that it represents. So it's for one month. The information that we're entering in here is for a one month time frame. We need an amount description. Remember, our statement of owner's equity is looking at the value of our owner at the start of the period versus the end of the period. So we want to look at Pat Glenn Capital as of July 1st. That's the start of our period since we're only doing this for one month. Very important thing that I want to point out to you here. In the instructions, it says that Pat Glenn established Half Moon Realty on July 1st. So that means Pat Glenn's capital was zero to get started. The only way that a capital account has a beginning balance for the period is if the company had been in business prior to that date. So we're carrying something over. This business was not established. It didn't even exist in June, so that means there was nothing available as of July 1st. They did make an investment. So investment made on July 1st. That investment that was made, if we look at our accounting equation grid, we know that Pat Glenn invested $20,000 into the business 
on July 1st. We also have our net income for the month of July. So our net income for July coming right from our income statement of 11,800. And we know that they have a withdrawal. Our owner withdrew from that business, Pat Glenn Drawing, had an ending balance of $4,000. So we have to put in that there was a withdrawal. Again, in the information that was provided up here, you have to put in a minus sign for anything that's reducing the value. So we put in that minus 4,000. Our positives outweigh our negatives here. So that means we have an increase in our owner's equity. And that increase is at 27,800. Since it's an increase, we would add it to the owner's beginning capital. They didn't have any beginning capital. So that means Pat Glenn's ending capital is at $27,800. We need Pat Glenn's ending capital balance in order to complete our balance sheet. So our balance sheet we know is our accounting equation. It's our assets, our liabilities, and our equity. For our heading, our balance sheet is always a snapshot of one particular day, what the balances for those accounts look like, in this case, as of the last day of July, so on July 31st. So assets, our assets, again, using your accounting equation, here are our assets. We have cash and we have supplies and we want the ending balances for both. So we list our cash first because it's our most liquid at 27,900. And then comes our supplies, representing the supplies we had on hand of $500. So our total assets for that period of time is at 28,400. Liabilities, we only had one liability. Again, use that heading that we are looking at here. We only had accounts payable. And we want to know how much we owe at the end of the period. We only owe $600 at the end of the period. And then finally, we need Pat Glenn Capital. But we want Pat Glenn's capital as of July 31st. So we don't pull it from the grid. We pull it right from our statement of owner's equity. Pat Glenn capital as of July 31st is at $27,800. So our total liabilities and owner's equity for the period, we add the two values together. We're at 28,400. It matches or balances with our total assets.